Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Fad Show. So on today's episode, I can't believe the time has finally come, but I'm gonna be doing the 50,000 mile service on my Mark 7.5 Golf All Track. I say I'm doing a 50,000 mile service, but I am kind of by no means sticking to the Volkswagen uh, maintenance schedule. I will link the Volkswagen maintenance schedule uh, down below. Um, I'm doing pretty much everything ahead of schedule. Uh, I'm going to be changing out the gear oil in the rear differential, the front differential, or as Volkswagen calls it, bevel box. So I have liquid Molly 7590 for that, new drain and fill plugs for that. I'm gonna be changing the manual transmission fluid. And although it is liquid gold, I'm gonna be using the Volkswagen uh, A2 fluid. Um, I say liquid gold because this is like $50 a bottle now. It's crazy. $53 a bottle now, I think it is. And unfortunately, it takes like just over two liters, so I had to order three of them. Uh, that being said, I think it's definitely worth it because I love Volkswagen shifter fuel, and I find that the best way to keep that shifter fuel is to use the OEM Volkswagen fluid. So I got a new drain plug for the transmission. Of course, mine is one of the ones that doesn't have a fill plug, so we're gonna have to innovate a little bit with that to get the fluid in. Um, of course, I'm just doing an engine oil uh, and filter change, cabin filter change, new drain plug for the engine oil, obviously, uh, man filter. It is my turn to put Ceratec in. I put that in about every three oil changes, so this has been three oil changes. And then I'm putting new spark plugs in. Uh, like I said, I'm way ahead of the schedule on this. The first time I did it, at 30,000 miles, and I think Volkswagen says 40,000 for these. Like I said, I'll put the schedule uh, down below, but it's only been 20,000 miles for that, but now my car has the stage three IS22 on it, so I'm gonna do it. I'm probably gonna shoot for every 20,000 miles to change the spark plugs, and I'm putting in the RS7 uh, spark plug, so it's one uh, temperature band colder than the OEM spark plugs. Um, supposedly, once you get to like 100 horsepower, uh, above stock, you're supposed to use colder plugs. So I'm gonna give these a try. Uh, APR actually used to have it on their website to use colder um, plugs and then they, I don't know why they took it off there. But anyways, I'm gonna give these a try. Uh, so with that, oh, and also the one service area that I'm way behind on is flushing my brake fluid. Uh, I could go on for 30 minutes about all the things I thought about doing with brakes on this car and why I haven't done it yet, but long story short, I was kind of torn on what I was gonna do with brake setup on the car, and I was just gonna wait and do the fluid when I changed the brakes. Uh, I haven't done any of that yet, and it's just been way too long, so finally I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flush the brake fluid. So with that, let's get into it. So here you can see the drain and the fill plug on the rear differential, not to be confused with the Haldex fill ports, which are on the front of the differential. Um, yeah, so just make sure you understand where you're draining the correct fluid from. Uh, they are five millimeter Allens and they get torqued to 19 Newton meters, so it won't take much force at all to remove them. I always start by removing the fill plug first. That way, if you have any issues removing it, you don't drain the fluid first and are not able to fill it to the correct level. So once again, I'm proving myself as a amateur YouTuber. I tried using a new microphone while working under the car to get better audio. And yes, it was not working and I never tested it out. So unfortunately for this part of the video, I'll just be narrating. Uh, this job is actually really easy. Um, just removing the two tiny five millimeter Allens um, to access the fill plug and then obviously the drain on the bottom. I opted to get new fill and drain plugs uh, and replace the existing ones. I'm not really sure if that was necessary. They do have uh, copper crush washers that come with the new ones. Um, you could probably get away with reusing them once or twice. The fluid for them in the rear differential actually looked uh, to be in very good condition. You can tell that the car does not use the rear as much as the front as the front diff uh, was a lot more dirty than the rear. Still good peace of mind to go ahead and change it up. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'm gonna do something absolutely ridiculous here and I'm going to fill my liquid molly into this Valvoline like quick fill pouch. I will say that I love liquid molly to death. I fully stand by their products, but I cannot stand their gear oil bottles. Um, they're a German car manufacturer, but I haven't seen a German car yet where this will actually fit into anywhere where you can just use the spout that it has to fill whatever you're trying to fill. Um, so yeah, and they make the bottle too tall that if you use like the hand pumpers that most auto parts store uh, places sell, it won't go all the way at the bottom. So then you end up with like a little bit of fluid left over and you're constantly pouring between bottles, making a mess. Um, also the, whatever, the opening on the top is not the standard like US bottle size. <sighs> all right, so I'm just gonna fill the, there's a tiny bit of Valvoline in here. Hopefully my car won't be so offended that it's getting the tiny remnants of this. So Liquid Molly, if you're watching this tiny YouTube channel, please offer these style bottles. Please, they're so much easier. And I'm gonna attempt to go under the car for the rear differential with everything I need, which is a five millimeter. Um, my torque wrench, that's the 19 new meters and two new drain fill plugs. So as I mentioned before, the drain plug gets torqued to 19 new meters. Having a quarter inch torque wrench is actually super handy for cases like this where you need to torque something in a tight space. You can see here how much quicker and easier these flex fill pouches are. The rear diff takes 0.9 liters of 7590 gear oil. Uh, I think I didn't quite have my pouch full all the way because I had to stop and add a little bit more to it. Just fill until it just spills over the fill port and then go ahead and replace your fill plug and tighten it down and torque it to 19 millimeters just like the drain plug. All right, moving on to the front bevel box. This will be a little harder to show just based on the location of things. The fill plug is on the top of the bevel box under this heat shield. It's really hard to show on camera. And then the drain plug is pretty easy right on the bottom of the bevel box, easy to access. Here I am removing the drain plug for the front bevel box. I did not film removing the fill plug because there's no room to film in that location. It's the same five millimeter Allen. You, just, you have to find the right union joint for a five millimeter socket or using a ball headed Allen wrench seemed to work when putting the new one or the new plug back on. As you can see, the front differential gear oil is a lot darker than the rear. I don't believe Volkswagen for life of the vehicle fluid is definitely ready to be changed. The front bevel box Drain plug gets torqued to the same 19 newton meters. Filling the front differential or bevel box is a little bit more challenging than the rear because even with the flex fill pouch, you're not gonna be able to get it into the location uh, where the fill plug is. So I had to use this small Tigon tube and a syringe to inject the gear oil. This was definitely time consuming. Here's a time lapse of me injecting the gear oil into the front bevel box. It's probably not the most efficient way to do this, but from what I had in my garage, this is what I had to do. Probably would have been easier if I had warmed the gear oil up. It took quite a lot of pressure to inject it in the coal garage. Eventually I got the necessary amount of fluid in. I also did not show installing the fill plug really. There's just no way to get a camera in there. Torque spec is the same 19 newton meters. I found it easiest to put the fill plug in with a ball headed Allen wrench and then use a swivel extension to torque it to spec. All right, so I'm gonna remove my air box in order to get to the top of the transmission, which is where I'm gonna have to fill mine from because it doesn't have a uh, factory fill plug, uh, which depending on what year or when your car is built, it seems pretty random as far as which ones have them and which ones don't. Unfortunately, mine does not, which would make this job immensely easier, but so be it. So I'm just gonna remove my air box so that I can get to the top of the transmission. 
Obviously, if you still have the stock air box, it's gonna be a little bit of a different setup, although the process for removing it is more or less the same. Here's the 19 millimeter bolt I'm going to remove. It's actually for the shifter mechanism detent spring. Because of the spring tension, there's constant pressure on the 19 millimeter bolt when removing it. Um, it's not typically difficult to get out though, just feels different with the spring pressure on it. Once removed, this is what the detent spring looks like. Here's the location of the drain plug on the transmission. It's a 10 millimeter Allen. You can also see on the side of the transmission where the fill plug should be, uh, and it's not there. It's very unfortunate that they chose not to put one on these transmission, but here we are. Also, you can see the coloration of this oil. It was definitely ready to be changed. So I ended up buying a new VW drain plug. Again, you might be able to get away with reusing the old one, but it's cheap enough, a couple bucks, might as well just get a new one. And the torque spec for the drain plug is 30 Newton meters. Here's my setup for filling the transmission. I had to use a pretty narrow Tigon hose in order to fit it in the location I'm filling from. You might have to move the shifter linkage slightly in order to get the hose in. Uh, I'm then going to use a syringe to force the fluid in. It might be worth warming it up before. Um, my garage was pretty cold and it was very difficult to inject the fluid. I really hope this works because this fluid is very expensive. What I don't want to do is pressurize it so much that I blow this connection off. But at this rate, I'm gonna be here all night. I wish there was a better way, but with like the shifter linkage in the way, you just can't get a thicker hose than this tiny one in there, so. Luckily, it seems like it's going in though. I don't see any leaking out. The level's definitely going down slowly, but surely. I would be the worst shop mechanic because I could do absolutely nothing in the book time. I would schedule some time for this job. Here's a time lapse of 30 minutes cut down to 30 seconds of me injecting the required 2.3 liters of the VW manual transmission fluid. Like I said before, I just prefer the VW fluid over anything else. Eventually I found the compress the syringe against your chest method, which seemed to be the fastest way to get it in there. All right, so the next job I'm gonna do is flushing my brake fluid. Um, so the first step is going to be to lower the level in the uh, in the brake filler, booster, reservoir, whatever this thing is called. Um, just so you can put new fresh fluid in it. I use a pipette to do this. It takes a long time. If you're worried about efficiency, you can use a turkey baster or a um, one of those syringe things. And I dropped the pipette in there. I like using the pipette even though it takes forever because it's disposable and you can just throw it out afterwards because obviously I probably wouldn't want to use um, the syringe or the turkey baster again after I use it for brake fluid because it's pretty nasty stuff. That being said, you also don't want to get it on your paint because um, it is corrosive. So I'm going to do this. It's going to take me a long time, so I'm going to turn the camera off. You get the idea. All right, so I went ahead and lowered level down to the minimum mark. Now I'm just gonna fill up the brake fluid reservoir until the top. Again, you don't wanna be, or you don't wanna overflow it because it will make a mess and be nasty to the stuff it contacts. All right, so now I'm gonna set up my motive power bleeder. I'm just gonna screw the cap on the brake fluid reservoir.
and then I'm going to fill this up with one and a half liters of my Motul 600 brake fluid. And this uh, Motul fluid is actually a lot darker than the OEM Volkswagen fluid, so it should help make it pretty easy to tell the difference when you start getting fresh fluid. All right, so one and a half liters are in there. Should be good enough for this car for the four wheels and then also the clutch slave cylinder. I pressurized mine to about 10 pounds to bleed the brakes. I find the VW uh, ABS modules are pretty restrictive, so you need a decent amount of pressure in order to get a good bleed on all four corners. So here's my setup for the right rear. I just hook up my receiver bottle to the brake bleeder and then it's 11 millimeter uh, bleeder screw just loosen it and then you'll see the fluid start to come out start from the wheel that's furthest away that being the right rear then go to left rear right front left front and then clutch slave cylinder here's a time lapse of the left rear so you can get an idea of how long it takes to do this it's not a quick process i filled the rears to about halfway full on my bleeder bottle and then the fronts i did about one third of the way full same with the clutch slave cylinder. It takes probably a good 10 minutes before the bottle is halfway full. Another note is my right rear wheel had some air in it from the factory bleed, which was a little concerning and a little disappointing. Here's the location of the clutch slave cylinder bleed valve. It is a nine millimeter. And the process for bleeding the clutch slave cylinder is really no different than the brakes. I went to about one third of the way full in my bottle. Uh, I'm not sure why it is, but it always seems like the clutch slave cylinder brake fluid ends up being dirtier than the brake fluid. This was the only area on mine that was actually pretty dirty. Now I'm moving on to the oil change. If you don't usually drain your oil from the bottom, this might be a good opportunity to do so. I, however, do it from the bottom every time. I won't spend much time on the oil change since I've made an entire video on it. The only thing I'll say is that every three oil changes I had Ceratec and this happened to be that oil change. And in goes the Ceratec out of, like I said, I do this every three oil changes. Um, I used to mix this with the oil. Now I tend to just put it in first and let the rest of the oil you add wash it down. So the service fill for this is 5.7. So I just put in 300 and this is five. Um, so that's what I'm, where I'm going to start um, before I check it. So I'll just put this whole thing in and yeah. All right, so now it's time to change the spark plugs real quick. So there's four uh, grounding wires for the coil packs. Drop, come off. There's four ground wires on the top of the coil pack studs. Once those ground wires are removed, you can remove the coil pack studs. Then you can unclip the four electrical connectors, push them back, and then you can wiggle all four coil packs out to gain access to the spark plugs. These are still in really good condition, but better safe than sorry, I guess. Changing the spark plugs on these vehicles is about as easy as it gets. I'll also note that I am installing the one step colder Audi RS7 spark plugs on mine. Interesting enough, the Audi plugs come in a Volkswagen box and they are manufactured by NGK like most Volkswagen spark plugs. All right, 25 newton meters for the spark plugs. <whistles> A 
When putting the coil packs back in, I put a little bit of dielectric grease on each, and I hate to say it, but the rest of the process is just the reverse of removal. All right, now to run the car and make sure uh, the oil level is good and also there's no issues with spark. All right, so the only thing to do, left to do now that the car is back on the ground is make sure all the wheels are torqued to spec. So guys, that's a wrap on this episode. It was a lot of work, but uh, I hope you guys like this video because I think I kind of realized a lot of things that there's not a whole lot of information out there on these cars, or at least the little bit I looked, I couldn't find. Uh, but I guess some like PSAs, public service announcements. Um, I changed my front bevel box oil at 50,000 miles. It was pretty nasty. I definitely probably wouldn't want to run it any further than 50,000 miles, I'll probably just stick to the 50,000 mile interval because that's what I do for usually all my gear oil in my cars. Um, so yeah, that definitely is pretty nasty. And you can tell how much more this car uses the front wheels and the rear wheels because the rear diff wasn't too bad. Probably if you don't feel like doing it, don't have to do it at 50,000 miles. Front diff was definitely ready to be done for the 6MT people or manual transmission guys. That was definitely ready to be done at 50,000 miles. So yeah, I really don't believe Volkswagen when they say it's life of the vehicle fluid. Also, um, I guess I didn't really mention it while I was kind of doing the video just from the amount of time it takes to bleed all the brakes. It just, it's really time consuming. You just have to let it flow for a while. The ABS modules on these Volkswagens are kind of like really restrictive. So it just takes a while for it to, to get a good flush on it. But anyways, my like right rear corner had air in it from the factory. Like it probably took maybe halfway through my bleed before it started getting air-free oil out of it. So that's a little, little bit of a bummer. I'm kind of, I don't know. I guess I don't wanna be like whatever, biased or anything, but these cars are built in Mexico. So even if they have German parts on them, maybe the care in putting to the, them together uh, isn't the best, which is kind of unfortunate, um, but so it goes, clearly I drove the car for 50,000 miles and never noticed it. I mean, the brakes have been spongy, but all Volkswagen brakes are spongy. So uh, I kind of just figured it was how it should be. We'll, I haven't driven it yet, we'll see how it is. I'm guessing it probably firmed up the pedal just a little bit, getting all the air out of the system. So that was a little bit of a bummer. Um, spark plugs, I've made videos on that before. That was pretty easy. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's all I did. It was a lot of work. Um, but I feel good about it. You know, I think my car is gonna appreciate it and hopefully it will help it live a long life because as you know, there's no, no longer any manual wagons or Volkswagen wagons being sold in the US. So it's kind of unfortunate and I need to make this one last as long as possible. So hope you guys found this video insightful. Please, uh, if you have anything you wanna discuss, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Uh, if you really liked it, please like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for next time. Thank you guys, bye.